あれは Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the s e v e n Works channel. Today, we're going to be building the Gundam Cell Same from Build Diverse Re Rise. And、uh, I just want to answer your question that you'll probably ask because、um, a lot of people will say that, oh, why don't you buy new Gundams? Why don't you buy the new Build Diverse series? To be honest, except for this one and the Core Gundam, the new Build Diverse Re Rise design, I have to honestly tell you, is crap, okay? Like most of their design is too childish and I don't like it, okay? Except for this one, this one is a little evil, so you know, I can accept it. But other than this and the core Gundam, I can't even, I can't really take the others. Like the other design, I just can't accept it, okay? So, anyway, I'm not gonna talk too much, so、uh, we're gonna look at the runners first. So, before we open it up, let's just take a look at the size. So, you know, cell sand arm, we got all k i n d of designs here the shield blender, the folding, this launcher.、Um, you know, this design, a lot of people say is weird, a lot of people say is crap, but I think that this design is looking pretty good, except in my opinion, because, you know, I, I really don't like, like, All of the Build Diverse g u m p e r there's one that I, accept, that I don't like the design. The Justice Knight, it looks way too ridiculous for me, okay? Anyway, that's a side topic. So we're just gonna take a look at this. Oh, by the way, there's an Easter egg, there's an Easter egg in there. If you, if, you know, if you know that, if you read the runner's name, there's a, there is an Easter egg in there. But anyway, so. It's descriptive here as well. It's based on the Gundam Mark III. So, XGUC Mark III coming. Wink, wink. Let's take a quick look. So, this time first, we have the self same、um, introduction. We have the Mask Man introduction. I really should catch up the. The series, right? I really don't know who he is, okay? <laughs> I never w a t c h I didn't really watch Field Divers because it's, it's, it's not my style, anyway. So, here's the thing the most important part Gundam Mark III is a material g u n p l a That means, spoiler alert, XGUZ Mark III coming in a way. Anyway, because they released the Infinite Justice when they released the Justice Knight, recently they used it. Uh, as the part variant to release the revived version of the Infinite Justice, so that means Mark III is on their way. And as I said, this kid h a v e an Easter egg that everybody is gonna blow your mind, okay? Anyway, so we have the cover guy down here, we're just gonna quickly flick through the instruction menu. The menu itself, actually, there's not much to look at because seriously, though, now it's like an internet days, you can, you can, you can just You can just basically you know, search it online if you're really interested in the instruction menu. But I'm just gonna quickly flick it through for you. So, you look at this. Box art looks pretty cool. Gotta say that. So, now first, we're just gonna start with the runners. So, of course, I'm gonna get these away. So, we're just gonna start with the B runner. So, B runner got two of them. Is it B runner? Yes. The B runner h a v e two of them. So, I will just, just choose one of them to describe. This is definitely the waist, waist part. This is the waist part as well. Waist part,、uh, the feet part, and then we have the shoulders. We have the arms here, the head here, and then we have the part of the, part of the, Connected between the torso and the waist, and we had a thrusters here as well. So, next,、um, we have two E runners, they are duplicated, so I'll just choose one.、Uh, this one right here, we can see that there's some legs part, there's some,、uh, this is a torso, and then we have the shoulders part here as well. We have the, some, some part of the legs here, so you know, overall, it's a very dark color, so it's very hard to tell is it like black or blue, but it's a little bit, it's, a, it's like a leaning towards like a dark blue color. Um, pretty much like that. So, this is part of the eyes here as well. This side here is a part of the eyes. Then we have two A runners. So, surprisingly,、um, it looks a bit different. <laughs> surprisingly. So,、um, I don't know why they don't mold it into like a one big part, but I can understand because、um, the The, the weapons itself is so large. This one is the launcher, this one is the launcher, launcher tube, and this is the wings, the wings of the weapon, and this is the huge, gigantic, gigantic spear.、Uh, the spear is part of it here as well.、Uh, this is the antenna. You can see that there's one 
one Miss Li right here. That is uh, very funny, actually. Uh, here's the gigantic arms. The gigantic arms are here, and then we can see that there's some inner joints. And here as well, um, it's basically the weapons. Now uh, we are up to the D runner. This is where it get very very interesting. So D runner, they are duplicated they're exactly the same. So here's the thing. If you don't believe me, watch me. Look at this. Gundam Mark III. They are releasing the XGUZ Gundam Mark III. I'm so excited right now. Wow, but I'm still going to build the RE100 anyway. So uh, this is the feet part. We have, I don't know what's this part. I really don't know what the other part. I, I assume this one is like the the, the small little piece uh, on the head. And But this is pretty much the feet part. Oh, you still don't, if you're still not convinced, I have another evidence for you. So this is two C runners. They are, they are pretty much the same. So look at this again, Gundam Mark III. But Gundam Mark III is on the way. So we have the uh, hands option here. We have the the gun barrels, and then we have the joint, inner joints of the whole Gundam. So that's pretty cool. And as I said, Gundam Mark III is on the way. I'm so excited. Okay, next we have a potty cap and then we have a sticker. This time the stickers uh, is mainly focused on the eyes. So other than that, I assume the color separation is gonna be very well done. Uh, we will have to look at it um, at the finished product. So let's not talk too much. Let's uh, go to the review. Hey guys, welcome back to the Evo Gundam Mark III review. So, you know, let's just start a review and I'm gonna start something with very negative because you know, Personally, I like the design. When I when I when I see the official picture released uh, by Bandai, I'm really excited. Like I literally really want to buy this. But once I received this gamba, I found out there's a tons of tons of problem on this gamba. Uh, yeah, like I mean, color separation absolutely fine. Design absolutely fine. But 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 when they designed this. Gampa. Yeah, I know it's uh, it's gonna be eventually lead to XGUZ Mark III, but if they put this design, put this kind of joint design on Mark III, I don't think they will last very long. So I have really, really, really no. I really need to talk about this problem. So first of all, you know, joints are amazing. Their articulation amazing as well. And you know, for something for Mark III's design, uh, it got a very very heavy armor on the legs. I understand that articulation will get interrupted, but seriously, man, why is everything on this gamba is so easy to fall out? <laughs> I don't know why. It's so soft and it's it's, and it's not tough enough. It's just not tight enough. It's, it's like moving around, stopping around. It, like for example, look at this leg. What the hell? It's so soft. It, it's, it's not even tight enough. Like. When I post around, when I was posting the camera, when I was, you know, making poses and shooting photos, this thing, the lights just pop out suddenly. It's it, it just very, it, it, it just annoys me so much. I don't know why. And I can definitely think that Bandai didn't consider that. I know you're trying to make the XGUZ Mark III. I know Mark III don't have much weapons, but this customized Mark III, which is evil Mark III, actually got a lot of heavy weapons. If you use this kind of soft joint, it's not even going to stand very well. And neither is going to pose very well as well. I have problems when I try to pose. This hand, is, this arm right here will, will just suddenly fall out of the whole piece and drop on the floor. Seriously? Come on. They they gonna need to think about the the actual situation on the gunplay itself. You think you see you have so many heavy weapons. How are you supposed to expect it's gonna hold tight when you have so many heavy weapons on the actual Gundam? Seriously, think about the design. Anyway, enough negativity. So we're just gonna dig into the review and we're gonna start to talk about some positive things. Just for a better purpose. So I think I would just take off the spear because you know. I mean the gigantic weapon, I don't know what's that called anyway. So I would just take that thing off because it's easier for me to show the articulation without, you know, uh, constantly ranging. So here we go, starting with the head. So head we can see here is a very, it's basically, I can tell you that it's a Mark III head with a one eye antenna with a additional mask. Yes, that's basically it. If you really want me to describe it, this is basically just a Mark III head added a 
uh, imbalanced antenna plus a very weird mask but the very weird mask uh, is uh, the moving articulation is pretty fine it can lift up so when you lift up we can we can clearly see that the mark free space is in it and move down move around side by side to side move around that's very good because the mask is getting in the way this bottom mask is here getting in the way so you can't really move the head 360 but that's fine that's completely okay well, anyway, I gotta say that this head looks extremely cool. So now we're gonna take a look at the torso. This torso is completely different than the Mark III. Um, the Mark III, it looks like more like a regular Mark II mixed with Sega Gundam design. But this one right here, as you can see right here, this yellow piece is here, here is really large and it's also pretty exaggerating as well. So uh, I gotta say that I I, can, I have mixed feeling between this torso. I think it looks, uh, the scale looks a bit weird, but anyway but you know from the looks of them it contained the same design like most of the uz gundams the chest giving you a very strong feeling of uh very heavy and very very powerful uh it's buffed as well so you know uh, for the movement right here we can move around pretty firmly as well but uh the torso have a thing is um the ball joint at the torso actually don't really it's not holding too good and sometimes when you move the torso you often have situation where you move it too much and it's just gonna pop and then the whole whole uh, torso is gonna start disconnecting which is pretty annoying sometimes but you just need to be careful just try to push down as you just try to push down the torso as you're moving it around okay but overall the color separation on the torso i think um is is completely fine there's no problem about it yo i gotta say that these arms right here is the most most interesting thing on the whole gunpla they chew they chose the design uh same one on the gundam wing venice which is a very early bill fighters uh gundam so they choose the same design same concept design like the Gundam uh, Wing Gundam Fairness. Uh, I'm pretty happy about that because you know this imbalance design. Some people hate it because they 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 are very, they they really don't like something not balanced. But I personally pretty like it. It adds uniqueness on the Gundam and it's giving me more reasons to purchase them, build them, and then maybe you know become a fan of them. Anyway, so we're just gonna get to it. So we're just gonna look at the most. Un not interesting part first so this uh, this arm right here it looks pretty similar to the mark III, um but there's a thing the articulation i'm just gonna start with the articulation the articulation move it to the back until it hit the wings and it's no longer movable and then the whole thing can lift which is very good the bending angle though um, the bending angle i gotta say that this bending angle for a 2020 gunpla or 2019 gunpla this is totally unacceptable a you know the the like seriously all you can move is a little bit over the 90 degrees what the hell come on it's 2090 now it should be it should be uh it should be a triple joint instead of this kind of thing but uh the forearm can be moved the forearm can be moved but there's a very annoying thing is um okay i'm just taking this off first first this forearm is very easy to fall off which is something that i don't like and two if you look closely Every time when I try to move the elbow, I gotta need to tie. I gotta need to push in the parts as well because um, the construction is not really uh, reliable, and it's all is and it's always getting a gap, and which is kind of annoys me. So now we're gonna look at the other side. So now we're gonna look at the other side of the arms as well. Well, both of the arms contain the same thing as you can move it to the front, but you know, really though, I don't really see that in kind of like uh affecting the whole thing or anything like that or changing the all the articulation i don't really see that kind of stuff but first uh without the large weapon we can achieve 360 movement where we can switch around here as well uh, a very interesting thing is they also give you additional movement on the big hand right here this hand kind of reminds me of the gundam dn design if you watched my review before uh it kind of reminds me of that design so you know the hand looks pretty cool but i have something very negative that i'm about to say so first when we look at the official picture we see like oh my god there's so many color separation on it we have gray with orange with a bit of 
uh, I don't know what's that color called. It's a little bit red and a little bit pink on the on the tubes here. But when I re when I was building, I literally starting starting to think that come on, Panda, you're too lazy. At least give us the color separation on these tubes here. Come on, like I can't understand why you can't give us color separation uh, inside the hand where it's gonna be gray. I understand that you can't give us that kind of detail, but at least give us some a little bit of detail on the tube. And then nobody just give you the whole orange piece. There's that is a lot of colors that you have to repaint on the hands. And and frankly, I need to say that it's not really acceptable in 2020, okay? But anyway, so we're just gonna look at the the articulation on the hand. This thing right here, holy crap, this this extendable hand, I love it. I always like to mess around with it because look at this, look at this, look at this. It's so good. It is so good, and then the arm, and then the hands here, additional hands here. You can bend it, and the f and the s and two fingers can is movable. That's great. Only two fingers. <laughs> anyway, so then uh, I like this kind of gigantic hand, this kind of weird hand. I like it. Uh, I really dig into it, but I wish they are they are more. You know, they they are not really le uh, they are not really lazy about it and give us color separation. Well. I can't really complain since it's an XG. Let's take a look on the waist. So the waist part, I think they use the same design as the Mark III. I don't think there's much difference, but okay. But I just gotta say that. So the front skirt movable, side skirt just a little bit movable. So basically all you can do is this. But the only thing that I need to say that uh, is they did the back waist justice. They actually give some little bit of color separation on the back waist, which is very exciting. Yay. <laughs> Anything. So... Uh, the legs can kick to the front, not really, because the armor on the legs is so large. Every piece of it is so large that really affecting the articulation. Kick to the back is literally impossible. Kick to the side, uh, surprisingly, kicking to the side is pretty good. And then, you know, bending, uh, you know, I, I yeah, bending, I think that's the maximum it can do because the armor is so big. Look at this. All the armors on the legs is so big and is is really affecting the articulation like i can't do anything about it okay so now looking at the legs though the legs do have some hidden things so first we have um thrusters in it and then we have double joint so we can move two times so there's two hidden joint here so okay so i think it's pretty interesting and one thing that's just interesting as well at the front here is hidden a gun Oh, it's pretty good, right? It kind of reminds me of the design uh, of uh, Sarah V from the double and the uh, Arch Gundam from the from the uh, double as well. It kind of reminds me of the design. The le the feet here is not really surprising. It's just a very big ball joint, so it's not really anything like surprising or exciting like that. But there is some assemble tip that I want to give you. Is this Evo Gundam Mark III? When you assemble this two piece two piece right here, this outside two piece of armor right here. Make sure you press from the middle and then let it go in because you know, a lot of people think that this gap here is not normal. This gap here is normal because that's how they design it. And you need to push it at the middle so it, so you can make sure it's exactly pushed into the joint instead of just flipping around and you know touch it and fall it off. But I have something to complain about the assemblability. So this piece here is movable, right? Now you see it's movable, but when you try to assemble it, for some reason it's so hard to push in. <laughs> for some reason it's so hard to push into the correct spot. And I try a lot of times and then finally I got it right. So I just want to say that just be careful when you assemble the legs because the legs can be quite difficult to, to uh, snap in correctly. But overall, I like the legs color separation and I gotta say that they, they did well on the legs, but uh, it's just the large pieces of armor really affecting the articulation. Let's take a look on the backpack. So the backpack here, I think is different. Uh, there's three pieces of thruster, which looks very uncomfortable for me. I don't know why. I really don't like this kind of thruster design. It looks very, uh, it looks disgusting, okay? <laughs> it looks very disgusting. And uh, so now we can now finally look at this big wig big weapon so this big weapon right here i don't know is it anything different than that but it's a very huge weapon it is very heavy as well spoiler alert the hand cannot hold it okay so anyway so this thing right here as i said at the beginning it can snap on the uh, backpack itself which is which is pretty simple and then at the other side here we have a cannon 
uh, the, this cannon right here, it is extendable, of course, and is also movable. So right now, I'm just gonna quickly show you how to how to open up the cannon. And next, uh, I gotta say that there's something not mentioned in the instruction menu, but on the on the runner itself, there's extra parts for the vents and this hand. This hand right here. It never gave you the instruction how to how to how to how to assemble it. I I just basically just uh snapped it on based on my knowledge. And then apparently there's a open hand on this kit, but in it, it just never mentioned in the instruction menu. So I guess it's not part of it. But anyway, I'm just gonna show you how to open the cannon first. So right now let's quickly show you how to open up the cannon. So the cannon have a lot of have a lot of joints here, so it's very easy to move to adjust the position as well. So what you want to do is you want to get the cannon down all the way on the hands and then right here and then you just want to flip it out. And then now the handle is hidden in here. So this is a very nice thing. So the handle is hidden so it looks uh, like it looks more comfortable now so we don't have to constantly thinking that oh my god the cannon uh, the cannon's handle is actually outside and it's really affecting the overall finish. Well uh, right now they got a very good design they cover it up so it's pretty good so now you should hold the cannon like that and it looks pretty cool as well you can adjust the end though the the cannon itself is pretty easy to equip on so anyway but i do found a little special easter egg in it uh i found these two pieces here i don't know is it a beam saber or not because when i look at the instruction menu the the design of these two little pieces here it looks like beam saber but i can't confirm it so uh somebody would well will somebody like to tell me like is this beam saber or not i i really don't know so anyway now i'm gonna show you something very hilarious anyway guys this is the end of review ha jokes on you no uh, this is not actually the, the end of review so i'm just gonna take it out for a moment so look at this when i try to hold the weapon itself look at this you can't even hold it so that's why i said it got flaws in the design because one how are you supposed to expand such a small arm or you know not a really strong arm to hold such heavy weapon and two now i can't lift up the weapon Ah, it, it, it's just kind of sad. But anyway, this is a good combo. So it's mo it's entirely new, which is good news. But really though, I really want to say to the Bandai design team, when you design this combo, the outside, it looks very cool. But really though, you really didn't think about the joints. First of all, the legs joint is very soft. It's hard to control and it's easy to pop out. And two, we have such a cool weapon, but we can't even hold it because let me show you again. Seriously, how, how am I gonna pose with it? But anyway, but anyway, we just have to deal with this. So now you know the pros and cons. If you're just going for the, if you're just going for the look, I think it's a absolute must buy. If you say you want to play with it, uh, I don't think you should play with it because it's very soft and it's, it's really getting frustrated. It's, it's, it's really frustrating to, to pose correctly. So really depends on you. But I still recommend you to buy it because it's such a it's, it's a new mode and is it looks pretty cool as well for an evil villain. So I gotta say that really depends on you. So anyway, this is the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. So uh, leave a like on my videos and subscribe to my channel. Hit the little bell next to it to get the the update whenever I upload a video. And I will see you guys in the next review. Goodbye.